Hello, my name is Jeremy Elder. I'm a staff product designer on the foundations team at GitLab. And for this UX showcase, I'm going to talk and share a little bit about the work I'm doing for pajama scaffolding, structure, and ops. So I'll switch over to take a look at the Epic. And uh, I won't read all of this, but the main purpose of uh, this effort for pajamas is, to, is twofold. Uh, first, pajamas today has components and it's very um, you know basic form of components that has some foundational elements and then we go on the other end of the spectrum and we have uh, objects and um, I'll just flip over here quick so we have our you know some foundations we go from from that uh, to a little bit of layout components data viz regions which is a bit fuzzy and objects and all of this there's just not a lot of glue to, to bring it together. Uh, and the best way I can state this is that th there's a design system, but not a design language. Uh, so we have these, these parts of the speech, but we're not assembling them in a way that we could communicate things consistently and effectively and efficiently. And so this effort is to do that uh, or to begin that, that effort. Uh, and so the main purpose of that is to, uh, to build out more layers in that middle ground of the design system to show how these uh, kind of disparate pieces relate to each other. And uh, the outcome of that would be more visual design direction, UI consistency when it comes to implementation. Uh, but at the same time, our vernacular and, and agreed upon definitions and categorization could use some bolstering. So terms like patterns, organisms, regions, they mean different things to everyone. And um, trying to even come up with with aligning on meaning, it, you know, in on the fly, it, it really stifles additions and system maturity when we don't know what to call something or where to put it. And so, a large part of this initial effort will be to to help to refine that design language and provide groundwork for efforts like unboxing, beautification, future efforts like that, so that we have a, a jumping off point to know uh, what to what we're what we're actually where we're actually starting. Uh, and just to read this last part here, pajamas is not just what, but it's how. Uh, and that's what it means to have a design language and not just a design system. So this is really helping uh, to take the what that we have today and, and shape it and, and articulate it better with the how. Uh, and so how, how are we approaching that? Uh, there are three phases. Uh, the first is, is pajamas scaffolding. So this is about creating definitions around what those what those different parts of the system are uh, dealing with the website itself which is a direct reflection of of that structure so dealing with the information architecture content mapping uh, the third piece of the scaffolding is gap analysis so it, it's determining where are the gaps in in pajamas itself uh, and then where are gaps between pajamas and the product so uh, kind of taking it from from a couple of different angles to figure out how we can bolster it and and sure up some things uh, a secondary phase would be pajama structure and this would be taking those actual outcomes those definitions the ia that we determine and actually just kind of uh, getting into the the code itself and and reorging things and moving things around to to make the website reflect these changes uh, part of that structure, just a question I have out there is, is what would it take to make Pajamas site the go-to? Uh, I even find myself going to GitLab UI, to Pajamas, to the SVGs project. And if we consider all of these things, the design system, how can we get to a single source of truth? How can our structure of the Pajamas site reflect that, that meaningful uh, organization of, of all these different concepts? And then last... Uh, the last phase in this is is what I'm calling pajama ops. So you might have heard of design ops or other ops, DevOps, obviously. Uh, but pajamas ops is about creating useful tooling and features around design to create more efficiency uh, and clarity um, in execution. So, for example, storybook. You might have uh, an actual storybook playground where there's different features, robust layouts, accessibility testing. You could actually build structure and layout using utility classes, et cetera. So uh, you're able to, to construct your idea using all of the tenets of the system. Uh, there, could, there could be internal plugins, plugins in Figma uh, to help speed up efficiency, whether that be 
quickly inserting icons or pulling uh, a third party logo from the SVG's repo and inserting it into uh, uh, your Figma file or syncing up a Figma file with a, uh, a GitLab issuable. Uh, and then also with the ops, you know, how do we handle triage and contributions to, to kind of help with the, the ecosystem around pajamas and prioritization. So as part of the ops, determining what, what's important to work on, what's going to benefit uh, the team. Uh, and I mentioned the outcomes a little bit, but just to cover it here, uh, consistency and design execution, user experience, like a shared design language, being able to have more informed decisions and, and contribution. Uh, and then pajamas and product planning prioritization. So I won't go into to the rest here. There's some considerations, some additional resources and reference. There's the issues, uh, but I'll just show you where I'm at in the process today. So jumping into Figma, uh, what, it, what I've started with is definitions. And uh, these definitions are from the, the pajama site itself. So if you go under get started structure, there are some definitions of what we consider foundations, components, regions, objects, content, usability, resources. And uh, so I've laid that out and I've, and I've stripped that down to just cover here foundations, components, regions, objects. So things that are kind of the main constructs of the, uh, the artifacts that we create with the design system. So if you're thinking about atomic design or in, in that line of thought where you have this these building blocks today these are what i would consider our building blocks uh and just an, a quick note on atomic design that's something that that i think is is fantastic i've used it before i know others have too um, but one of the shortcomings that i had uh, with it is is not directly related to atomic design itself but it's the fact that atomic design is, is very much geared towards how you might build and construct a design system, but not so much about how you might consume it and use it. And Brad Frost even talked a little bit about this, where the atomic design model is more like your workshop and you need a storefront. You need a, a place for people to consume it. And pajamas is that place where we consume it. And so because of that, not going straight forward with just an atomic design model, uh, because I don't think it fits our paradigm of how we're constructing things in GitLab and how we're designing. Uh, so the, the, the tenets of that and the, the idea of having, you know, pieces that can be broken down are there, but uh, the expression of it and, and the, the methods in which we'll use it are, are uh, going to be expressed a little differently to, to hopefully make it more meaningful. Uh, so I, I've just recorded the definitions here. Uh, the examples of what might fall under each uh, as they are today and then i've mapped out the the current site map uh, you can see there's section headings there's a little legend here page or a link opens a new page or composite component uh, so this just maps out what we have today and you can see we're, we're pretty deep in the the product section and uh, the other sections are relatively light uh, nothing wrong with that um, quick note on composite component so what that basically means is that a, if you think about a component having a single purpose, serving a single purpose, uh, some of these components that have a single purpose are built up of other components that have a single purpose. So an alert, for example, has a button in it. It has uh, an icon in it. It has other layout properties. So it, it, it's it's more of a composite of a few different things. Uh, even something like, you know, banner, uh, breadcrumb that has avatars, it has links, has icons. These are more composite components, but they still serve a single purpose. So just calling those out, how those get communicated later, uh, not 100% not on yet, but the reason for calling those out is just to know that there are deeper relationships here. We're not gonna break these down further in, a, in an atomic way, uh, but we're going to allow these to, to reflect what they're made of. And so like an alert, for example, if I make a change to the close button, uh, I should have some sort of an understanding that there are implications of that change that will impact other components. So it's, it's basically just calling that out. Uh, and so as part of my process, 
I have gone through an exercise with the concepting, con concepting here, uh, and uh, reworked some definitions, put a little graphics to it, uh, reworked the IA a little bit, or a lot of bit, created some section mapping and a quick, <clears throat> excuse me, nav concept. Uh, also going to be working on some decision trees to help kind of determine some things, uh, but I'll quickly walk through the kind of the working definitions that I that I have today. Um, and these are not just all things that I've come up with. Uh, there's been much discussion and and things uh, that have helped shape these. Uh, but it starts with foundations and foundations are just those foundational items that communicate the opinionated way in which basic visual design attributes and elements and concepts come together to create a, a, a very distinct GitLab personality that's expressed in the UI. Right now we have these items, but uh, the key word for me here is opinionated. If you think about um, IBM, you think about material design, uh, even to a degree iOS, the, there's, there's very opinionated design decisions. You can look at it and you know it, it, what, you know, Who's, who's speaking that out, where that's coming from, what the mindset is behind it. Uh, and with GitLab, <clears throat> I feel like, maybe go off on a little bit of a tangent, uh, it's kind of a, a bootstrap influenced. Uh, and and I think we could be more opinionated in that. And so by, by honing in this definition on foundations, what I really wanna capture is the ability to, to begin to shape and express GitLab personality in the UI and have our own uh, meaningful and opinionated way to do that, where you you look at that and you're like, okay, that's that's GitLab, that's their expression, uh, and it starts with these foundational elements. So then moving on to components, uh, and that just being a a UI element that serves a single purpose or function, and two or more of those combined with with other things potentially like text, are what I mentioned earlier with a composite component. Uh, next up is patterns. Now patterns itself is is kind of a a term that's thrown around a lot, and if you look at different design systems, it's used in different ways. Uh, and we looked at other terms like module, uh, for example, but that still spoke to more of a single kind of plug and play item. Uh, and I think pattern is applicable, uh, and here's why. Uh, because it's, it's, it's kind of a useful term, and it speaks to things that are repetitive, and that's really the goal here, is combining one or more components, content elements, into a repeatable, consistent group uh, with the purpose of providing related function, content association, or both. So patterns are, are they're pretty broad. Uh, and if you look at the examples, um, it, you know, there's a form, a merge request widget, or drag and drop. So an example uh, of a form is gonna be combining content elements into a repeatable pattern or group. Um, a merge request widget is the same kind of deal, but it has related function and grouping. Drag and drop is a pattern that is, it's a micro interaction. It happens without larger changes outside of itself. It's, it's a way to do things in the UI that's functional and repeatable. And so all of these things fall under a pattern. Uh, and I will say that we are in the midst of discussion with all of these. So uh, if I turn on comments, you can see there's there's discussion happening all over. I invite you to also jump in and uh, add your thoughts. Any any place you see my, my little avatar there, I've created a prompt with a question, a thought, uh, that will hopefully spurn, spawn, spurn, uh, initiate some, some conversation. So uh, please jump in and, and do that. Uh, so jumping from patterns is templates. Uh, and that is just prescribes a layout and potentially responsive behavior for a page or a common content layout. So we could think about maybe an issue rule or a dashboard or search results page um, or even a section of a page. But really think of this as, as more of the shell that is going to tell things where to be and how to interact with one another. And a pattern could live in that. So uh, in that regard, um, it's, it's, uh, it's more of a, it's more on the side of layout uh, and it's more along the lines of helping prescribe where things go and how they relate. Next up is objects. Objects we have today, uh, they're conceptual building blocks and, and it defines how we think about something uh, and it's independent of its visual representation or interaction model. And so 
uh, there's concepts like a job, a merge request, a repository. There, these are concepts that, depending on where you are in, in GitLab, can take different form. And so we have these today, but I think by providing more definition and space for these, we can we can start to build on this uh, and, and further clarify this. These are, I say, some of the most heady stuff in pajamas is, is in objects. Uh, and for that reason, I want to be able to to, to keep it there, but also figure out how we can develop it further to make it repeatable uh, and have that section grow in, in a meaningful way. And then the last up is flows. So uh, what, I, what I've defined a flow as is it's it standardizes a, a macro interaction and it, it mac, I'm sorry, macro interactions and sequences that help a user complete a task. So a flow is kind of the verb to an object's noun. A noun is is that concept, that thing, a flow shows like how that acts and behaves and works. So some examples would be saving and feedback, discovery and learning, editing. Uh, and this is something that uh, Mike Nichols was working on. And, and actually I give credit to him on that definition uh, because we have a lot of things in GitLab that are, are very similar, saving and feedback. It happens in many places, uh, discovery and learning, editing. And in each instance, the flow might be a little different. And so what happens with the UX is it becomes, you know, in one place I'm doing settings here and another place I'm doing settings here. It's the same function, the same desired outcome uh, for a user, but it's done in a completely different way. And so this, the goal of having this section appended at the end is to take everything else and show how do we move through these macro interactions and sequences to help a user? And by documenting that in pajamas, we, we lay the groundwork for just a more consistent UX and, and behavior. Uh, so I've taken a little bit of just exercise here to create uh, some, some visuals around this. Uh, many systems do that where it's just, how do we visually just kind of boil it down and distill it and represent it visually? So this is my take on that. Uh, where we have these foundational elements, we have components that are built on that, we have patterns, we have templates, objects, and a flow. So just a little pyramid there that shows kind of the, the layering. Um, let me do a quick time check here. Let's look. I don't know if that'll stop me. So uh, I don't have a time check. That's all right. You can watch this at 2x, right? Uh, so with the IA updates, I have... Uh, included new pages and links and also moved and renamed pages. So those are new additions. I'm not going to go through all the changes here, but uh, it's, it's based on these definitions. So this is where the structure is. So under the product, uh, we have our guidelines and that's a whole nother uh, deal to talk about. Right now it's getting started or, or get started, but I think that if we just frame those as guides, then there's going to be more opportunity to talk about things like how do we contribute? Like what is, like how do we approach responsive first or affordance or context? Things like that that are more guide-like uh, will live there. And then we go into our, our sections where we have foundations and components, our patterns, templates, objects, flows, etc. cetera. Uh, and then accessibility moved under here. So if we, if we look at our current IA accessibilities on its own, uh, and with this, it's, it's specifically related to the product and the expression of the product. And so placing it under the product section uh, not only minimizes our, our top layer, but it also gives more meaning to that section. Uh, there's some other conversation and notes in here that I would encourage you to take a look at. Uh, and quickly here, I'll wrap this up. So some section mapping. So here's current. We have all these sections today, and here's how they map to new sections potentially tomorrow, that's a concept. Uh, so take some time there. Uh, and then I just wanted to, sh this, is, this was kind of my own way of seeing like, how is this expressed? If, if, if I'm updating this IA, how, how is it gonna be uh, presented to a user of the pajama site in a way that's meaningful? And does it make sense? Does the, the, the way it's stacked and ordered make sense? And so this is uh, my, my take at that, uh, along with some design liberty. Uh, so a few things to note today, we, we lead with GitLab design system. Like when you go to pajamas, that's what you see. I want to flip that and say, okay, this is pajamas. It's the GitLab design system, uh, and make the site really more, more ownable and meaningful 
as pajamas. Oh, that's what we refer to it as. So let's reflect that uh, in here, moving search up and over. And there's more room here for other items. You know, this is the typical focus, click to expand, enter your query, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you can see just a little more hierarchy here with, with the brand section, product section, research, and some additional kind of utility items where there's design resources repository. So this is just a, a really quick design exercise to show how we could have all the same information and more, uh, but upon reworking the IA, what would it come across like as you were going to navigate this? Uh, and I think it's I think it's pretty clean and, and uh, self-explanatory, but I'll let you weigh in and provide your feedback. Uh, some of the next steps I'm working on would be looking at the definitions a little further where as we work through feedback and comments, uh, going through that and adjusting, updating, but then creating some decision trees. Like how do I know if something's a, a pattern or a template or is it a composite component? It, whatever it might be, taking time to go through and, and create a decision tree so that when we we come to adding and contributing to pajamas, we understand like where things fall and why. Uh, so that's that's where I'm at. This is going to be uh, a mini milestone process, and uh, I would just uh, again encourage you to jump in and and comment in Figma on those prompts. Also, with the Epic, which is going to be linked. Uh, Please uh, take some time to read through the rest of the items in here and add your feedback here as well. But I thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the UX showcase for this week. Thank you.